Officially available to developer beta testers starting today is a new software update for your Mac which happens to be macOS Tahoe 26 beta 5 and in this video I'm going to be telling you all the new features and changes that you need to know. The update size on my M1 Pro comes in at a massive 15.25 gigs and I was updating from the previous beta 4. Just to keep you in the loop, Apple also released beta 5 versions of iOS 26, iPadOS 26, macOS 26, tvOS 26, visionOS 26, watchOS 26 and they also released two other release candidate versions of macOS. And of course, most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Half Men Half Tech. So if you wanna stay up to date, then definitely do subscribe so that you don't miss out. Now that I'm updated to the latest release of macOS 26 beta 5, these are the new software changes that we have. Going into the system settings, just to see how much macOS is taking, you can see here, if we go to the storage section, it's going to index and a bunch of icons are still loading in the back and I believe this is the third restart attempt that I've done so that everything finishes indexing including the applications. Now this is a third attempt to complete the index but you can see macOS itself is taking 23.9 gigs and before that it was taking 26.73 gigs so kind of a substantial jump and then if we go to Apple intelligence this sometimes fluctuates but you can see right here it's taking 12.69 gigs and before that it was taking 12.41 gigs. Now the build number we have right here is 25 alpha 5327H and before that we have the build number that ended with an I so we took one step in the positive with regards to stability. In terms of new features and changes, some of the changes that you're going to see once your Mac restarts, if you focus on the liquid glass theme, you notice that it's now being displayed and mimicked in more app icons. So Automator is such one, we have contacts as well. And depending on the application that you open, such as settings, you can see it a little bit and others as well, you'll be able to see it. But when you open certain applications such as Apple Music, which by the way, has a new plus screen that you can see it will welcome you to apple music then when you go to where you have album covers and others you'll be able to see as you scroll like this now you can see this but i don't know if it's a bug or if it's the translucency but you can see that there is no frosted theme right here you see between this library pane and the edge of this window you can see as i scroll you can almost see everything it's almost like it's non-transparent on that corner and this seems like it's a repeat of what we used to have with mac os 26 beta 1 let me know if you like this change or not but you can see the slight change that has been added this iphone is running the latest public beta version of ios 26 and if i just laid on my cheek just to feel how warm it is it's actually pretty hot to the touch and the battery life feels like it's half of what it used to be on iOS 18 and that's just one of the many downsides of being on iOS 26 beta version. My personal worst experience was when I couldn't pay for an Uber because Apple Pay and banking apps had stopped working and it turned out to be a long story. So if you're experiencing issues of your own on the devices that you are using iOS 26 beta on and you want to downgrade without losing data, then you gotta try out Dr. Phone. They make the process really easy. Check out how simple it is. Step number one, launch Dr. Phone on your computer and select system repair. Step number two, select iOS, then downgrade iOS option. Step number three is to back up your iPhone as directed and make sure you choose the data type you want to back up and make sure that your iPhone stays connected to your Mac during this process. Step number four is to download the iOS 18 firmware and once the download is complete, click repair now and it will begin downgrading your device. Step number five, after the downgrade is complete, successfully Hopefully, click done and your iPhone is now running a stable version of iOS 18 and most importantly, 
your data is safe and it's pretty much that simple. So to learn more and try it out for yourself, check the links in the description of this video and shout out to Wondershare Dr. Phone for sponsoring this segment of the video. In the Apple Contacts app, they've changed some of the layouts of things and the search bar location has also changed. I really wish that the search bar, which you see right here is in this top corner. I wish that Apple kept it standard in the same location throughout the different applications that at least Apple develops. That way it will be more uniform, but the layout has been updated. This is how it used to look before and after I update it, this is how it looks. In the wallpaper settings, we have a new change that has been added. And as you might know, we no longer have like a screensaver tab in the settings. Now screensavers fall under wallpapers, it's combined. And this is where the screensavers tab will be. So now if you wanted to get the Mac Wister Hall 26 official dynamic wallpaper with a screensaver you can see now we have a screensaver that's available and if we go to the screensaver tab we can click preview and it will preview what we have with Mac OS 26 which is something that's good and you can see how it looks now you get the clock if you have it set and you get this wave that shows up but it actually doesn't end there because there's more changes that have been added so if you go into your wallpaper section and then you go to where it says landscapes and say show all you'll be able to see that then now they rearrange them according to the release so you have Taho which is the latest so you have day, morning, evening and night and they are all together. And by the way, if you want to download the actual system files, you can go into your drive and go to your library. And if you select where it says app poor application support right there and then go to this section that says Apple idle assets and choose customer and go all the way to the 240 FPS you see the ones that you've downloaded and you can actually export this to an external CD or an external drive or USB stick to use in your other systems or other Macs that might not support the ones that are here on Mac OS 26 when you are idle on the wallpaper section without even selecting the preview you uh, screensaver you see that it will automatically begin to preview by itself and give you a hint of what the screensaver looks with the selected option the last thing to comment on about the wallpapers you can see also when you go to this section it always loads so slow for me for some reason but when it comes to the dynamic wallpapers this one doesn't does no longer say Mac OS beta now it has the actual name which is Tahoe Another change that has been added has to do with the menu bar. So now when you select this, you'll be able to see that there's some sort of uh, liquid glass theme that has been added to these app icons that you see right there. And at the same time, if you go all the way down, this is how the bottom of the control center used to look. So it basically had different wording and it said reset menu bar and control center. But now they've shortened that phrase to just say reset control center which is what you see right here on beta 5. When opening the Freeform app for the first time, you're going to be welcomed to a new splash screen. Actually, it opened up on my main display, but you can see what's new in Freeform that tell you about Mac OS designs, update to image, playground, writing tools, and also recently added. So this is something that's good. Another app that has a new splash screen that tells you what's new, which I was surprised, is the Notes app. So right here, they tell you about Notes on Apple Watch core transcripts and markdown exports and imports which were already existing features but once you update this is one of the first new splash screens that's going to show up and it's going to be bouncing up and down depending on if you had it open or not the safari version that we have has also been updated you can see it's version 26.0 with this build number that's now dot one one dot three one of the things that's kind of unfortunate is that there is no compact tabs yet so I wish this would be a setting that Apple brings back like how we used to have it before. But if you are having issues and you want to see a change, definitely send your thoughts and feedback using this feedback assistant app. Another change that has been added now when you go to share something with someone, you can see that the app icon here for AirDrop has actually been improved. So that it has richer blue colors and the orientation as well has changed under the system settings. If you go to sound, 
you can see where the input and output selection is this section used to look like this before and then after updating you can see how larger and how the scope of it has basically changed alongside this update apple also released xcode 26 beta 5 and something that apple has just started doing you can see that they now ship apple silicon only builds for xcode and you can see this is a universal version and then this is the apple silicon exclusive version which i think is the first time that apple is doing this there's a new icon for the macintosh hd or hard drive which gets a new look and in this update you can see how it's been changed so you can see the before and after right here there's a strange behavior with this update whereby if you press f8 on your max keyboard which is the one that has play pause by default or with the previous behavior it used to open the apple music app but now when you press it it just does nothing at all so i'm not sure if that's a bug other behavior change that can be seen right here is when you access the apps app section and then you double click this apps app section before the behavior was different so when you would click on the app section what would happen was that it would actually like close the apps window and then if you click it again it would open it but now you can see no matter what you do if you keep clicking it it's just gonna click actually now the behavior change has just now reverted to the default maybe there's a character limit so let's try that again and see so yeah it does behave in the same way where it keeps opening the apps section but previously if you just double click this it would just close the apps apps this update also resolves some issues when it comes to icloud icons that were ununiform it's now a little bit more compact and you can see that when you visit your icloud settings there's another change as well when it comes to the control center animation so now you can see how it looks it fades in a little bit and then swipes in from the left to right which is a new way and a new behavior as well and you can always visit my previous video to see how it behaved and yeah this i think is a more dynamic way just to keep you updated there is an issue when it comes to connecting nfs share or network file system share with this update where sometimes the system might actually crash or experience a panic that's how this update came in for me on my mac let me know what you think about this video and if you have other new things to share do comment them down below and i'll gladly test them out my name is ben and i'm signing off